hello guys you're welcome back to my channel and today i'm going to be teaching us how to make a simple peplum blouse no special darts just the normal simple darts so it's going to be easy for us you know initially i taught us how to cut a basic body block so i thought of it that i should start gradually with us so today i'm going to teach us how to make a simple peplum blouse so let's get started the first thing you need is to take your measurements and of course you're going to need your bust measurements your waist measurements your shoulder measurements your sleeve measurements and when i talk about your bust waist shoulder and sleeve we should always remember that every of these details has the bust round and also your shoulder to nipple which will be your vertical measurements your waist round which is the horizontal and then your shoulder to waist which is the vertical measurement i hope it's clearer this time around then for your sleeve you also have your sleeve round and you also have your sleeve length so your sleeve round will be the horizontal measurement and your sleeve length will be wherever you want your sleeve to stop so let's get started the first thing you need now is to lay your clothes so how do you lay your clothes take note of this whenever you want to cut any clothes just observe your measurements i mean your horizontal measurements which one is the largest part now for this top since it's going to be a peplum top that means our main bodies is going to stop at our waist while the peplum which is kind of fuller so we don't really need the hip measurements for this kind of blouse so the bust is most likely the biggest or the largest circumference of the body now for me now my bust is 38 my waist is 33 so definitely i will lay with my bust why do i do this i don't like wasting my material so i try to do the proper things first so now that we know the largest part of the uh, of your body mine is 38 so what i do is that i'll divide it by four so 38 divided by four will give me nine and a half so then I can now add my seam allowance depending on what you want. So I want to use a seam allowance of just one and a half. So that's 11 and a half. So I will lay 11 and a half. As you can see, this is your clothes. I'm just using a leftover fabric. I'll fold like this into two. And then I'll begin to check. Okay, I need 11 and a half. Maybe the first time I laid, I got 10. Okay, so I'll keep moving it till I get my 11 and a half. Okay, 11 and a half will be 2 inches allowance. I need just 1 and a half. So that's 11. 11. So once I get my 11, I can now rule out my vertical measurements. So one of my vertical measurements is from the... Thank you. From the shoulder to my nipple, and my nipple is ten and a half. So I will rule it out like this. I hope you can see. Yeah. And then from the nipple also, from the shoulder to the waist, which is where I will stop. I'm not going to use another boss for this. I I just want to teach us the basic thing that we have practiced. So my shoulder to waist is. I'll be using 17, then I'll add one inch. That one inch will be half will be for the for joining the peplum and half will be for joining the shoulder. So after measuring out 18, I'm going to measure it again here. 18. I hope we can see. Then I'll connect it using a ruler this way. So this is my my bust line. So now I'll be using the basic neck. The minimum neck for a woman is three. So I'm just going to mark three. And then the depth, depending on what you want. So, 
I'm going to use five. You can use as much as six or seven, depending on what you want. Then I will connect. You can connect using a French curve. I'm just going to use my hand this morning. So after that, you measure your shoulder. And my shoulder is 15 and half. So I'll divide my shoulder by two. You divide the shoulder by two. So 15 and half, that will be seven three quarter. So you mark it. And also mark half inch to, for the seam allowance to join the sleeve. I hope you are following and we can see clearly. So from there, I'll, I'm going to measure three quarter inch for my shoulder slope. I could also use half depending on what I want. So once I measure, I'll connect to where my shoulder width here stops using a ruler. Can you see that? So from here now, I'm going to measure whatever my armhole is. So from, you can check our basic bodies. I think you'll be able to calculate. So my armhole is going to be at 7 3 quarter. Then, once I get all these lines out now, I can easily begin to bring out my horizontal measurements. I hope this is clear. So now, from here, from this ammo line, that's where you bring out your bust. This is just meant for your darts. Your bust round, you bring it out from your ammo measurements. So my bust round, this is it. Which, which was what we used in laying, is 38 divided by 4, that's 9 and a half, plus 1 and a half sewing allowance, that's 11. Then, I'll come down to my waist. My waist is 33. So, 33 33 divided by 4 is going to give me eight and quarter. So we're going to add one inch for the darts, then one and a half for the seam allowance, just as we did. So I'm going to add one inch for the darts and one and a half. For my seam allowance i hope you can see that so the the reason why we we have to have the dots is that you know we are going to take the dots in this way so it's not going to be part of the clothes and it would have reduced your waist round in a way so you need to have that one inch that you used for shaping on the part of the clothes so that's why i had it so now we can connect together using a ruler and then for my dart my nipple to nipple is eight so i'm going to divide it by two it will give me four and then i will measure four on my waistline and also i'll measure four on my chest line so this one now you're going to come down by one inch from this chest line your nipple line you're going to come down by one inch then after coming down by one inch you come to this four year we want to remove the half half now so you measure half to measure half to this side and half to the other side too for your darts and then you connect you connect to this one inch below the chest line So that's that. The only thing we are left with now is the arm hole. So in getting your arm hole, you measure your shoulder again. So this is my shoulder. 
my shoulder is 15 and a half that's seven three quarter plus half so you can connect the line downwards i hope you can see that so what we do next is that we're going to measure half you measure this line down to this point are we together so it's stopping at three quarter then half of this place is going to be this is seven three quarter so that's three and a half is seven half is quarter then so that's going to be three three quarter this is seven half and then one over eight so just locate your the half points here and come in by three quarter but for someone that is very busty you might just come in by half instead of three quarter so you connect to this point here from the tip of your shoulder connect to this point and then from here from this point here connect here I hope you can see that so that will be for the front so for the back now you are just going to connect from here from the the normal line you just connect it straight to that point so that's that for this clothes i hope is very explanatory enough now we can cut and remember that we are cutting for the front part of the clothes So you cut the back first. So after we finish cutting the back um, bodies, then we can now trim out the front armhole so that it will make it more easier. So we'll cut the back armhole first. So now this is what we have. The next thing now is to use our front bodies to cut the back bodies. So I'll fold again. But this time around, I'll consider that I need um, a zip allowance. Zip allowance for the back. So when I fold, I'll fold it a little bit in excess and place my front on it. Can we see that? So after placing my front on it, this will be my zip allowance, but this is too much. So what you do is that you can just measure whatever you need for your zip allowance. I'm just going to use one and a half for my own zip allowance. So I'll place my hand here and then I'll try and reduce the allowance. Can you see that? Or another thing you could actually do is to Consider what we laid initially. You know we laid 11, so you can just add like one and a half to the 11 in laying your back bodies or two inches for your zip allowance. But you can also do it this way. So now that we've been able to achieve it, you can take the measurement again. So we have one and a half now for our zip allowance. So once you place it this way, you can cut. So now for the back, you could make the neck the same and you could make it shorter. So I'm just going to make it shorter. I will use just two and a half inches as my 
neck depth at the back and then I'll connect it to my neck width the same neck, neck width I have here I'll connect it okay so now that I've drawn the neck for the back I can just cut it out you can use different shapes so so don't mind but I just want to use something that will be very simple for us since we are just starting and then I also cut the the shoulder slope that's the depression so once I'm done with this I'll open this up you open the zip part can you see this part you're going to open it up by cutting it into two so it's only the zip part you're going to cut into two because zip actually wants to pass through that part so once we are through with that we can now remove this so what i like to do is that you see this part here the center of where my dart is here i'm just going to notch very small so that i know where to pick my dart when i want to sew at the back too then i also notch this line so i can now remove so when i remove don't forget that we are here to cut the front arm hole so i'll trim the front arm hole too so this is it i've trimmed it off from it so this is our front and this is our back now when we want to pick our darts for the back you know here we came down by one inch for the back you maintain your darts there you maintain your dart there you are not going to come down by one inch so you maintain it on this line so i'm going to rule it for us to see now using this notch i already made it to be more easier for me or you can also still measure from the the shoulder here the tip of the shoulder here measure it downwards and rule again so for accuracy so from this line now remember that we had one and a half for our zip allowance so you are not going to start your dart from that part too, because it's not part of the main body you can just rule it away so that you can know what you need now our my nipple to nipple is four that's eight divided by two is four so i pick my point here on that line and then i come here i already notched here so i'm just going to come in by half on both sides of the notch that's for the back that and so i'll connect it together i'll connect it together this way so this is going to be for the back that so we have cut the back and this is the front I hope that's clear enough. We're about to cut the peplum. It's so easy. And I'm going to be teaching us how to make a 360 degree peplum. So how do I know what to fold? I'm going to... The only thing we need here is just the waist. So what we do is that we divide our waist. That would be... My waist is 33. So 33 divided by 6.28. It's going to give me... Can do your calculation to your waist divided by 6.28 you know to be able to easily get the um circumference you know we are going to make a curve it's going it's giving me 5.25 that's five and quarter so what i do is that i know that my blouse length is 25 so 25 minus 17 will give me eight so i'm going to add eight plus that 5.25 to know what to lay eight plus 5.25 then I'll, i'm also going to need my sewing allowance depending on what you want to use in doing this thing is it that you use a lining or you just use a bias 
So we we'll use either of the two. So if you're going to use a bias, you just you don't need so much allowance in joining. You need half to join the peplum to the bodies, and then maybe half or quarter to sew the bias. But if it's the lining, then you might need up to like half or one inch, depending on what you what you're going to use in sewing it. So that means nine plus five and quarter is going to give me what? It will give me fourteen and quarter. So what I need to do is to take my tape and measure out fourteen and quarter. And then I'll fold again into two this way. That's 5.25. You bring it out. You just put your tape here. Put your tape here and measure 5.25. Once you measure 5.25, still putting your tape here, you go around, measure another 5.25. Measure another 5.25 and another 5.25. By the time you do this now, this way, if you try and take the measurement round, you can see that it's giving us 9. That's 36. So that means it has added a little bit of my seam allowance that I need for my zip. So you measure nine round from this point here. Measure nine. Come here again, measure nine. Just keep moving it around and measure nine. Nine. So you can use your hands to just connect the curves together, the points together. So that's it. We have our peplum, so we can now cut. So this is what our peplum looks like, and this is a 360 degree peplum. Can you see that? So we can put that aside and cut our sleeve. So in laying your sleeve, remember, just measure 10 inches on fold. So after measuring 10 inches on fold, wherever you want your, just rule it out. I'm ruling this line out because my fabric is not so straight at this side again. And I want to avoid having a shorter fabric on the other side. So once I rule this line out now, what do I want as my sleeve length? Depending on whatever you want as your sleeve length, once you have laid this, so I need a sleeve length of 13. So I'll, I'll put my tape over here, then half to connect to my main bodies, and then another one inch as the seam allowance for the hemming. So then I'll mark the upper part this way. So this is 14 and a half. I'll put it on this line again. And mark another 14 and a half so I can rule. So my cap height is 3.75. You can check our video on how to cut a main body in order to understand how to get your cap height. My cap height is 3.75, but I'm just going to use 4. So after getting that, whatever the arm hole is, can you remember that my arm hole was 7 3 quarter? So I'll measure that seven three quarter here plus one and a half seam allowance. And then I'll connect from this seven three quarter here, I'll connect to this point here. I'll rule a straight line. I hope you can see that I, I rule a straight line here. So I'll, I'll get the midpoint of this particular straight line this is nine so the midpoint will be four and half then i'll measure half upwards in order to get the ammo for the back so from this upper part here i'll just measure about one inch so that my curve is going to start from 
this is about one inch and connect to this point here and then here but you could also use your you could use this this point here just use your curve to connect it and then this way too to connect it to this point so i don't know maybe you can see it well so you just connect so this will be really for the front and then for the back this way too so from this point here you just also do the same so you also connect this for the back but for me i told you initially that i use the same thing for my front and back because i really want my sleeve to be very fitted but if you still want to follow the normal routine you can just do it that way so i'm just going to cut my front for both the front and back i'm not doing any special thing so then the next thing now is what is my sleeve round my sleeve round is 11 so 11 divided by 2 give me five and a half five and a half plus one and a half sewing allowance or seam allowance i'll get it that way and then i'll connect together to the other point there So one thing to do is that since I need one inch to as my seam allowance here, one inch as my seam allowance here, I can just rule it out, cut this part out since we don't need it. So your four, your one inch, fold it in this way. Then I'm going to remeasure that that part again. Five and a half plus one and a half will give me seven. So I'll measure this point here, and then this one will be connected to this. So I'll show you the essence now as I trim it off. I'll show you the essence of what we just did. So this is it can you see this sharp part it helps to make the clothes lay on the line of the stuff but if we had cut it in this way this other part here will just go in like this when you sew can you see that so that's why i actually said we can just whatever your seam allowance is, even if it's two inches just fold it upwards and then we measure this point here and connect so this is our sleeve i'm just going to place it on the fabric again to cut the other side of my sleeve so this is my sleeve the two so we are done with cutting the fabric so if you want to use a lining, you can just lay the fabric again. You, you lay the lining and place the fabric on it to cut the fabric for the peplum, the front and back bodies, and then the sleeve. The only thing to observe is that when you want to cut your sleeve, if, if you are using a lining, you can just cut your lining to be on this initial line so that this fabric can fold upwards and your lining will be inside and it gives it a very neat finishing when you sew so that's that but for me i just want to i want to teach you something very basic so i don't want to start with lining now but anyone can be watching this we are actually doing it for beginners class so and this is the first stop they are cutting i don't want to use a lining we're going to use uh, bias to just turn it.